Hello everyone, this is Andrew again, and now we're going to discuss Professional PLC Programming Method Part 1. I just want to share my technique in PLC Programming. I call it SAT or Sequence Analysis Table. It is a PLC Programming technique developed by me on October 2014. Techniques that use table to analyze the sequence, then convert that table into a ladder diagram. I don't know if someone is already using this technique, but I tried to develop a technique last October 2014 to easily solve any PLC programming problem, and this technique pops up on my mind. But my technique or set is very easy to edit, and ladder diagram created from set is very organized and easy to understand. And this is the special features of this technique. From set, you can convert it to ladder diagram. And from that ladder diagram, you can convert it to set. And it is easy to explain. Set can easily understand by anyone, even non-technical person. If set is converted into a ladder diagram, only programmers can understand it. Okay. Step in using set. First, create a sequence flowchart. Then, create a set or the table. Input the sequence flowchart to set. Fill up the set table depend on the requirement and sequence execution. Convert set to ladder diagram. Okay, this problem is from episode 13, exercise 1. You can watch episode 13, exercise 1 to review the program analysis and the simulation of this exercise. Now let's try to solve it using set. First thing that we need to do is to create the sequence flowchart. And this is the sequence flowchart for this exercise. The cylinder will extend. Then after that, it will retract. Then the cycle will just repeat. Next. We need to create a set. By the way, we have two types of set. We have process set and step set. For process set, it represents the start step control of the process. For step set, it represents the number of steps, required input, and affected output of each step. When you're creating a set, you need to include on this table the input and output included on the sequence. Next, input the sequence flowchart to set table. We have this one cylinder extends. That's why we have cylinder one extend here. Then we have cylinder retracts. That's why we have cylinder one retract. And that is the end of the cycle and it will just loop. That's why we have reset sequence here. Next, we need to fill up the set table. We have x0, x1, and m0. Here, it is stated on the exercise that uh, the process will start if x0 is energized and the process will stop if x1 is energized. Then, we just need to have a memory. You can put any memory here. Then, let's go to step 1. We have cylinder extend. First thing that you need to do is to analyze what is the requirement so that the cylinder will extend. The requirement will be the cylinder must be at fully retracted position before it extends. Then, we need to put one here at x4. It represents the fully retracted position of the cylinder. Then, we need to put one here. That indicates that if x4 is energized, y3 will turn on. And for the memory, you just need to put any memory here. I choose M1. Then next, cylinder will retract. What is the requirement for the cylinder to retract? The cylinder must reach the full extended position. That's why I put one here at x5. Then, 
we have zero at y3 because when the cylinder reaches the full extended position or energize x5, cylinder will retract. That's why we have zero here. And we need to put a memory. I choose M2. Then lastly, what is the requirement to reset the sequence? The requirement will be the cylinder must go back to its initial position, which is the retracted position. Then we need to put M3 here. Okay, we already fill up the table. Okay, before we continue, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Please click the notification bell to notify you for new video. Don't forget to like and share our videos. Please like our Facebook page and click see first to notify you for new posts. If you like this video, please put a comment nice below. Here, how to convert SAT to loader diagram. We have seven steps. Okay, I want you to copy this step and try to print it so that you can use that as your reference. While we are doing our exercise, you can post this video. Okay. Now, convert set to other diagram. First, create launching program using process set. We have a start for x0, stop for x1, and memory m0. We need to put x0 here, then x1, and we have m0 here. So that when we energize x0, m0 will turn on, and when we energize x1, m0 will turn off. And that's how we are going to do it. Next, we have Create a series connection of process set memory and negated reset sequence memory of step set. It is the series connection between process set memory, which is M0, and negated reset sequence memory for step set. This is our reset sequence. We have M3. We need to make it negated. Then we have a normally open contact of M0 here, as is stated here. Then, create a series connection of previous step memory and current step input. Then, connect it to the output coil memory of the current step. Okay, let's start with step 1. Series connection of previous step memory. If this is step 1, this is the previous step, which is blank. That's why we will not series anything here. Then, we have a current step input, which is X4. That's why we have X4 here. Then, we need to connect it to the output coil of the memory of the current step. Our current step is M1. It means we need to connect X4 to M1. Next, create a latching for current memory. If there is no input required, skip this procedure. Don't create latching for reset sequence. We already create a latching here for M1. Then now, we need to repeat procedure 3 until we finish all step. Now we have cylinder 1 retract. We have X5, we need to create a series connection between the previous memory and the current input. We have M1, which is the previous memory, then the current input, which is X5, and we need to connect it to the current memory, which is M2. Now, we need to create a latching. Then lastly, we need to use the memory of the previous step which is uh, this one, step 2. We need to use M2. That's why we have M2 here. 
and we have the input x4 then connect it to the current memory which is m3 we have m3 here and because it is the reset sequence we will not create a latching here next create a serious connection of shut race contact and output coil set reset for all output and put negated contact to process set memory to all reset coil okay we already created a series connection between a strut rise and the output. We have a strut rise here and the output. And we also need to connect a negated contact for process set. We have negated M0 here. Next, put the address of corresponding memory to shot rise contact for all output. One is for set and zero is for reset we have one here it means we need to put m1 to set okay we have m1 here we need to put it to set because the value of y3 here on the table is one then we need to put m2 on the reset because the value here is zero and that's it our program is now complete Okay, let's have our program analysis. Let's press PB1. Okay, as you can see, when we press PB1, X0 is energized. That will cause M0 to turn on. And the normally open contact of M0 here will be closed. And because of that, M1 will turn on here. And as you can see here, because M1 is on, the shot rise of M1 here will turn on. That will cause Y3 to turn on. And even if the signal here is not continuous, because we use set command, it will not turn off anymore, even if there's no signal here. And because Y3 is on, the cylinder will extend. Then, as you can see here, the cylinder reaches the fully extended position. And because M1 is on and Y5 is on, M2 will turn on. And the shot rise of M2 here will turn on. That will send signal to the reset coil here. And because of that, Y3 will turn off. The signal here is not continuous. And because Y3 is off, cylinder will retract. Now that M2 is energized and the cylinder is at fully retracted position, M3 will turn on and that will cause the normally closed contact of M3 here to be open. And because of that, all the coil here will turn off. And as you can see here, M1 will turn on again. And because of that, the cycle will just repeat. The cycle will continue unless M0 here is not energized anymore. And to do that, we need to make X1 open. We need to press PB2. And now, because X1 is open, M0 will turn off. And the cycle will not repeat anymore. Okay, let's have our simulation. Let's press PB1. I will leave a programming tips for you. If the sequence is too short, it's better to use freestyle programming. It doesn't matter how long is the program as long as it is organized, easy to edit, easy to read and clean. Okay, thank you for watching this video.
and that's all for today thank you for watching this video please subscribe to my youtube channel click the notification bell to notify you for new video please like and share my youtube videos and like my facebook page please click see first on our facebook page to notify you for new posts if you like this video please comment nice please comment negative and colon and put your negative comments about this video please type suggestion semicolon and put the suggestion about this video and if you think that this video needs some improvement just type improvement semicolon and put the things that you want to improve about this video i will use all of your comment negative comment suggestion and improvement so that i can improve all my future videos thank you for all the feedbacks and thank you again see you next time